Are you stuck? What about unhappy? Join Elena Chapman, author, mentor, and life coach for 30-minute moments as she challenges you to get out of the doldrum and start living your life to the fullest. It's time to celebrate that life with 30-minute moments. Welcome to 30-Minute Moments, and this truly is a show that brings you betterment and peace to your life in every day. So I wanted to say, first of all, Savvy Sisterhood is going to have a summit. So if you are interested in getting involved in Savvy Sisterhood, and well, first of all, I got to tell you where the summit is going to be. New York City, Columbia University, Faculty Hall. It's so cool. And it's going to be in May. But anyway, the, some of the speakers are going to be just um, so inspirational. Women leaders from all over. And me. You get to see me. And um, it's going to be in, like I said, in May. But if you want to join, you got to get on to joinsavvysisterhood.com. And that's all in the little URL search bar on Facebook. But, okay, I really want to get to the show. Because today is a fantastic treat. You are going to just be amazed. If you have not heard of Paul Cardall, then you need to look him up, period. You just need to look him up. I think his music is the ultimate for gaining peace and gratefulness and happiness. I really think that he has just touches our souls and brings it alive. Paul is an American pianist and composer. He arranges music primarily for the Christian New Age classical and religious music sex. Uh, but his music... Oh, I also have to say, I'm sorry, I almost forgot. He's also a film composer, a musical producer, and he has a heart of an entrepreneur because he has a recording label and a premier recording studio, which I really love because he brings all these wonderful artists together. His music is melodic, and what I love are the chords. The chords just wash over you and just help you to just open up every part of your body and relax. On top of this magical music, he also founded, like I said, this it's called Stone Angel Music in 1999. That's the recording studio. And he is he has a fabulous heart. Um, he's also helped to launch some other wonderful artists like the Piano Guys, which I happen to adore. I want to tell you some of the music he has. Um, when I first heard him, I heard Live to Love. That's one of the mu songs that I just love. And then Gracie's theme. Oh my gosh, that is absolutely mind blowing. And if you watch the video, it just really blows your mind. That song was written for children with congenital heart disease. And what people don't realize is that Paul Cardall was born with that. And um, it's just beautiful. You have to see it. Sweet Escape, Redeemer, Letting Go. Beautiful. Um, it also needs to be known that Paul is a giver. And one of his newer projects is helping with Operation Underground Railroad, which is a nonprofit that battles child trafficking worldwide. I just love it. He's a child advocate, basically. New projects that we're going to be looking at is um, a wonderful Christmas album coming out. We're going to talk about that. And also, um, I love this, Paul, I have to say, Worth of Souls album because it's to illustrate to listeners that they are worth it. And I always say you are so worth it. With that, I would like to bring in Paul Cardall. Hello, Paul. So good to be with you. I'd like to talk about what you are always, you studied. You can tell when you listen to the music, you've been a musician. But what yeah. brought you into this? Um, this is a different level. This is a different level. This is not just playing the classics. This is not just uh, playing just music. This is reaching into people's hearts. So when did you decide this was the way you wanted to go? Those are very good questions. And actually, I, was, I did not receive a lot of training. I took piano wow. lessons as an eight-year-old, but I didn't, I didn't like practicing. I was a very <laughs> undisciplined child. Of, my mother had eight kids, and uh, um, so wow. she, she didn't put too much pressure on us because she couldn't, she couldn't even remember our names. Um, that's a joke. But Yeah, but no, I, I get it. Piano <laughs> lessons. I took piano lessons, and then I quit after about six months. But I loved music because music 
seem to unite people that are different. And I could hang out with certain uh-huh. people in school and, and talk music. And um, it wasn't until I was a teenager that a friend of mine who played the piano uh, tragically passed away. And it blew my mind that I was talking to him and having a good time. And then and the next day he was not available. He was not yeah accessible and I was frustrated and so I went sure. into my parents living room where the piano was and I sat there thinking like uh, this this piano's a, a puzzle piece how do we figure this out and how do I understand the loss of my friend and I sat through the piano and started trying to figure things out and I played my first melody it just came and it was like it was so simple it was three notes huh. but it seemed to wash over me and I had this overwhelming comfort Yes. This divine feeling of peace. And yeah. that drew me back to the piano to try to interpret and explain and express some of the, you know, the unknown mysteries of life. And so the heart of my music has always been trying to tap into the emotions we feel that are unexplainable. I love that. So you actually put yourself into feeling what that emotion would feel like, that intense gratitude, that intense calm, and then you bring it out into the music. Am I correct? Yes, I've I've tried to, you know, really I just play what I feel. A lot of artists will write a song based on a a story. Um, They'll have lyrics and vocalists, and not all of my music has vocals. It's primarily piano with orchestra. And so I will just try to tap into an emotion that is universal. We all experience ups and downs. And so I try to tap into some sadness and yet bring joy into it because um, we can focus on all the, all the bad stuff that's happened in the past or we can sure. count all the blessings and everything good in our life. And so I try to take a piece of music like Gracie's theme that you mentioned, which was oh, written for beautiful. a child who was sick. And then I yeah. turn that piece into a joyful reunion that the child will one day have with her parents and yes. the hope that kids are now surviving congenital heart disease and yes so you try to take all those emotions and and uh you know and to pull that off you have to surround yourself with people much smarter than yourself in music and they've been able to help guide me and mentor me uh to where we are today it's pulling, yeah, and you pull them in. You know what I mean? That I love also that you have a way, because you're playing with so much feeling, and, and it's not the strictness of one, two, three, four. I, you always, what really I love is that hesitancy. When you feel like you want to hesitate, you know what? I, you know exactly what I mean, don't you? It's, it, you're, you're, it's just that little pause, and it just it takes my breath away. Honest to God, it really does. I- there is so much power in silence. Um, there is. And when you put, and Mozart said, when you put silence in music, it becomes even more powerful. But the joke used to be that the reason I had so many hesitations is because of my congenital heart disease. I had an irregular heartbeat most of my life. Oh. So it was like there wasn't this consistency of a of a, of time, right. and so I would hesitate. And the joke was, oh, well, he's waiting for his heart to get started again. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my. <laughs> so, so, so you take all those emotions and you throw that into the music and then uh yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of what what it's we amazing. do. Amazing. Now, I firmly believe that music heals. And I do um I have a musical background myself and and one of the things I've always found is that um especially the vibration of music, everything. It unites us, but it also can heal us. And I would love for you to talk a little more about that aspect. You make a very good point. And studies are being done by universities like McGill University to prove that music has this, when you listen to it, there's these chemical reactions in your body. Dopamine um, is released from your brain into your body and you receive this, this pleasure. Yes. Um, and that pleasure is healing emotions. And so music music doesn't directly heal us, but it creates this atmosphere where if, if you just listen and it helps you forget, and then all of a sudden certain music, and it's not the same for everybody, but certain music will hit you 
and you will feel it. That's what Bob Marley would say. Yes. It would hit you and you would feel it and it would just cleanse you. Yes. And you would feel this this joy and that's exactly the type of music we've been creating at Stone Angel Music and, and all the albums I do because we want people to use it as a resource right. to help them access emotions that are not always easy to access. Ah, that's the music, perfect. The music, the music's not necessarily there to entertain you. It's there to enrich you. Yes. You know, it's so funny because we can choose, you know, the type of music we want to listen to. And and I, like I said, I love music. I'm always listening to some kind of music. And as I've gotten, well, become more aware of how I want to feel, then wow. I'm a little more choosy about the music, and I'm amazed you know, that it can be, have this wonderful melody, but the words to the music are very depressing. I've seen that with a lot of songs now, and I think people are not realizing how you internalize that. And when we listen to music like your music or some other just wonderful, and it doesn't always have to be just non-songs. There's music out there, oh, well, I'm going to show my age. <laughs> You too has some music out there that's really um, uplifting. Oh. Um, script. Well, when I was only forty. Yeah, that's there. You go. That's right. Forty's not bad. And then, <laughs> and then, um, but even uh, the script has some music that's very uplifting. Be your own oh, yeah. leader, and what yeah. we choose to listen to, but. When you choose to also go over and listen to, like, the Calm Meditations, where Paul Cardell is on on Pan Pandora, um, I find that just opens my mind to wonder. All of a sudden, I'll start looking up at the clouds, and I'll see the beauty, and look at the trees, and I will just feel this overwhelming sense of, of gratitude and beauty. That's how powerful music is. Um, it really is. It bridges the gap. Uh, and it, it does. Where words fail, music speaks. It does. You are listening to 30 Minute Moments, and our guest today is Paul Cardall, and I'm Elena Chapman. We'll be right back. You're listening to 30 Minute Moments with Elena Chapman, helping you discover your true purpose on WoWo and at WoWo.com. Okay, we are back with 30 Minute Moments and our fabulous guest, Paul Cardall, who is just amazing. Uh, guys, you really do... As soon as you get off this show, <laughs> I would love for you to get on Pandora or go on YouTube and just put in Paul Cardall and then just sit back and allow yourself to experience it. It, it really is um, mind blowing. It really is very cool. Paul, we were talking a little bit about music and the healing aspects, and I know it does um, release dopamine. And, and it really isn't that far-fetched, is it? Because when we're angry, we release chemicals that alter our body in negative ways. So when we listen to music and it's that simple, it can open yeah. us up. You know, and the reason these studies are being done is because music is slowly being removed from our education system. And ah. you know, But they're tying the fact that there's no music in junior high or middle school to now there are lower test scores and kids have more stress in their life. Sure. And obviously that comes from, that opens up a whole can of worms of things to talk about. But when music was part of a requirement, the kids actually tested better. And that's because they're cl it's clinically proven uh, that listening to certain types of music, the classics, expand your mind you do better in math you do better in remembering sure uh, things yeah. and plus that spiritual aspect that we've removed um, from a lot of our education is is music and art and well, it's so um, funny because when I was in high school and and I'm telling you when I was in high school again there's the age thing but drugs I, I, there were only three of us in my class that did not do any sort of drugs and I never felt the need. It wasn't, I was very popular. Everybody liked me, yeah. but I just didn't do drugs. Why yeah. did I miss that? Because I'm telling you, it was the music and the writing. And the music, I, I now know, music can get you to a place where you feel so, so much gratitude and so much awe. It's almost like being high. You don't need drugs. You're yeah. on a natural high, you know? You really are. Well, John Denver said that. 
<laughs> he did he? Yeah. I didn't know that. Did uh huh? Rocky Mountain High. Ra- oh, you, know you-, you can be in the mountains around a campfire, listening to music and getting high. He was he was talking about the 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 beauty of nature and music and <sighs> combining those two and feeling on top of the world. See, um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I mean, anyone who takes ten minutes out of their day yeah. and you lay on the couch and you listen to this calming music, you're going to get up from there grateful for for life. You are because it's going to help. It's going to help massage your brain if that's even possible going to massage your brain uh and and you're going to feel more aware of yes. yourself and what's going on that's exactly you. right you have a christmas album coming out correct i am yeah and i'm so excited because it's the first christmas album in a long time and mm. it's an instrumental record but we've got three guest vocalists that are on wow. it cc winans who's the most awarded female gospel singer of all time is doing Oh Holy Night with a full orchestra Wow! On the Christmas record. So I'm super excited. I'm excited. To have her, her on there. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. I love Christmas music. I just do. You know the real stuff. <laughs> well, most, yeah, most of these songs are all the um, traditional, I, got, I don't know if you want to call them hymns, but traditional Christmas classics that are Yes, nineteenth century. The one, the ones that are, you know, uh, all the churches. Everybody sings these. Songs. Yeah, and Fire just night, lights your heart on fire. Nature. Yes. Yeah, I love that. The spirit, the spirit of Christmas. The uh, spirit of Christmas. The stress of Christmas. I know. I know. We've got. We're all trying to get that stress. And I'll tell you, taking music like this, and and other music, it does decrease the stress. It does, and it does decrease the the um, angst, the angst that we all get. And all of a sudden, guys, you, you decrease that angst and that stress. And I'll tell you what, then you start focusing on what's really important, which is people, people, life, living life. And the holidays turn out to be so much more fun. And just so you know, it's when the turkey, I never knew when it was going to get done. <laughs> And so I would call people on the phone and say, okay, it's ready. Come on over. (laughs) And we would just get together and just have fun. It wasn't everybody had to sit a certain way. Or if we felt like going to a movie, we went to, it was about being with each other. If we felt like having a snowball fight, we had a snowball. You know what I mean? Just let go of the angst. Hear music. Enjoy your family. Don't you think that's life, Paul? You know it, it is, and we've tried to capture all those emotions. I, before I even started doing this, because my wife really is the one that really pushed me to do the Christmas record, I said, if we're going to do it, I want to do it in a way that makes people fall in love with Christmas. Yes. Because it is a stressful time because you feel responsibility to get gifts for oh. people that get you gifts, and they're still trying to catch up with. with but if you, can, if you could strip that down and just remember the nostalgia of our child, our childhood, yes. those Christmases. And we are trying to recreate those Christmases for our children. Yes. Give them those memories of that our home is a safe place. Uh, yeah. You know, Christmas is a great opportunity with great music. Yeah. You can always help your kids recognize they have a place to come back to because of what they felt at home. Right. And, and, which is even intensified at the Christmas season. It is. It is. And I always remember, you know, I just remember the the family and the fun. So if a Christmas yes. album helps to bring that more alive, that's fantastic. So I am very interested in in how, you know, you as a non-pianist, how fast you learned. And if as someone out there is listening and music is one of the best ways for you to release and listening to music, but some of us have an inkling who would like to learn how to play. What is one of the, you know, intimidation of perfection, uh, the perfection aspect, being wanting to make it perfective, that I think holds us back. How would you advise someone being a person who kind of learned on your own? How would you advise someone to go about just starting an instrument if they want? I think the first thing is to recognize that we tend to say, I'm too old, I can't do that now. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yes, we do. Because we we have said that you take piano lessons or cello or another instrument when you're young, and then you've closed the chapter after college to say, oh, well, I'm, I can't learn because that's what you do when you're younger. I, I'm a firm believer in education, and if there's anything you want to learn, you go and, and you learn it. And so with music and playing the piano, and this is gonna this is gonna actually reduce stress in your life to play the piano. Find a piano teacher and sign up to take lessons. And if you are doing a recital with the kids, do a recital with the kids because you're gonna have a lot of fun with that. You will. And the other option is you can just sit at a piano and you just try to look at it like it's a puzzle. And you have all those pieces and sometimes you play those pieces and the puzzle looks right and sometimes it doesn't look right but you just kind of have fun with it the same way when you get on a computer and try to figure out um (laughs) everything (laughs) everything i think you just sit there and you go okay i'm about to cook a meal here with this piano let's figure out what needs to go into it and you know you may get frustrated and that's when you just pound the notes and uh i'm sure emotionally you can go in there and just get a hitting on something else go hit on that piano and you're gonna feel better yeah it really is Uh, one thing yeah guys when you are just sitting around the house it's better than eating it's better than getting bored just try playing an instrument just just or listening to music but that going to the music aspect i i don't know i if i go three days without music i i'm not the same person honestly and so right having a little bit of music in your day, whether you're playing it or listening to it, it changes your day. It's one of the fastest ways to raise your vibration. It's one of the fastest ways to give you gratitude. You know? And it also it also reduces your chances of dementia. Yes. Uh, Alzheimer's. It increases your ability to remember. Um, it increases your cognitive skills. As That's we right. get older, we, we tend to, you know, my wife tells me a lot of things, and I have to have a little what yellow sticky notes so I can remember. Um, <laughs> me she too. Calls it selective hearing, but uh, so, so I think you're there. thinking of bigger things <laughs> with the music. <laughs> You are listening to 30 Minute Moments, and we will be right back with my very favorite section, so don't miss out. This is 30 Minute Moments with Elena Chapman, helping you find your inner self every Sunday on WoWo and at WoWo.com. Welcome back to 30 Minute Moments, and guess what? You know, if you've been listening, you know, and here we go. The shift, the shift, the shift. It's time for the shift, guys. And I'll tell you what, this is the part where we get why do people do the things they do or what has happened in their life that's pivotal, aha moment, that defines who we are or who we want to be. So, Paul, I'm asking you, what in your life got you to, that was just such an aha moment that you actually altered your life? Oh, I've had so many that you know shaped me but i me think it, it be it began primarily with being raised with a congenital heart disease and having numerous uh yeah. medical you know, well heart surgeries in my life which you know this it sounds like oh we're going into this sad moment here but the reality <laughs> is i my having heart surgery and being faced with um an unknown future most of my childhood has helped me learn more about life and love and charity and other people than yeah. than dwelling primarily on on the illness. I had a heart yeah. transplant nine years ago, and that was one of the most remarkable things because I wasn't expected to live. And I've been able to channel yeah. all these emotions because I've met so many people along the way with similar challenges so i'm able to take all of these things and and i fuel them into music and expressing the beauty of life because you know people sometimes we look at the world and go oh it's a dark place but we've got the stars to keep lighting you know the sky but i tend to think of the world primarily as the sun is coming out in the morning and it's going to light everything up we all get to be in that light and um, and so my overall goal and whole purpose in life has been, how do I help people feel they're valuable t- 
to society and that they are loved. And I try to do that through music. My, I try in a way through the music to wrap arms around them That's and let them know that they are important That's and that life, yeah. is, life is worth living. It's beautiful. No matter how hard it is, just keep trying. It's true. You know, so many of us are going through or have gone through pretty awful things, and, and we all have. But if you, it's, it takes, I think, it's not a special person. It's not a special person who can look at and only gain the good from that situation. It's everybody. It's a choice. And if we open our eyes don't don't hang in the sorrow of it, but look at the beauty that's still around you. Number one, it helps you get through. Number two, then when you, you when you thrive out of it, my gosh, you bring it to everyone, like Paul. And and I haven't heard there are many beautiful artists out there. Don't get me wrong, I love the artists, but Paul, your music does actually wrap around the listener. And it really does open up the feelings um, immensely. And I mean, I can listen to Gracie's theme for, I can listen to that four times over, you know, at a sitting, just because it just lifts you out. And you went through a very hard time, but look at the beauty you are showing to everyone else. And we can all do that. We can all do that. It's just opening our mind to it. Paul, if people want to listen to your music, what's the best way that they can? I, I encourage people to go to my website, paulcardall.com. It's C-A-R-D-A-L-L.com. And that will then uh, show you and where you can listen to it and give you more details about all the, all the music that's available there for people to access, access those emotions and love. It has been a, such a treat to have you on. I thank you for all the fabulous work you are doing. I want to challenge everyone out there that this season, we're coming up on Halloween and all, every, all the holidays are coming around. I am challenging you to stop stressing, to find ways, find three ways, and music is a really powerful way, for you to open your mind to the wonderment, the joy, the peace, and just let everything else calm down and bring that joy instead to everyone you love. That's my challenge for you this holiday season. You have listened to Paul Cardell and Elena Chapman, your host for 30 Minute Moments. Allow this to better your week and better your day. This has been 30 Minute Moments featuring Elena Chapman. If you missed an episode, download it now at woo.com. Podcasts by Federated Media.